in 1998 with a NASA JPL agreement to finally reimage the face using this incredibly sophisticated camera flying on the Mars Global Surveyor spacecraft. Things truly seem to be coming together. In 1996, NASA had announced the possible discovery of ancient life in a piece of rock that had come all the way from Mars. Finally, on the 5th of April, 1998, after almost a quarter of a century of waiting, we got from Mars Global Surveyor what should have been an exquisite, much higher resolution image of the face on Mars. Unfortunately, after JPL got through enhancing what came to be known in some circles as the cat box image, there was nothing left to see, which was obviously their intent all along. As you might suspect, NASA and JPL imaging experts to review the 1998 photographs. The image that JPL released to the media in 1998 uh, is not at all a faithful representation of even the raw data, let alone what is actually there. Image processing experts who have now uh, treated the image properly have shown that it does indeed look very much like a hominid face. Uh, when we got the original image of the face in 1976, uh, there was always the possibility that it was just a trick of light and shadow or something uh, that was an accident of nature. When we got the high resolution image, to our amazement, all of the secondary facial features were there too. Uh, eyebrow, irises, nostrils and lips with the correct size, shape, location and orientation to be portrayals of a human The odds against each of those things happening by accident range from 1 in 10 to 1 in 10,000. When you put them all together, the odds against all of them being accidents of nature are 100 billion billion to 1. Based on the results of the test, the object is artificial beyond a reasonable doubt. The Mars Global Surveyor went into orbit in late 1997 and since has been sending back literally tens of thousands of exquisite pictures of all of Mars. But Malin Scientific and Dr. Malin himself, who have the chief contract for the camera, have actually only been releasing these pictures in dribs and drabs, spaced out over several months and even years. Until Arizona Senator John McCain let NASA know in no uncertain terms that there would be a day of reckoning if in fact it were proven that the agency had deliberately withheld vital information either from the Congress or from the American taxpayer. Suddenly, without warning, JPL released nine new Sedonia images, some as much as two years old. Eventually, 60,000 new images of Mars were dramatically released, and on those, some breathtaking discoveries have now begun to quietly unfold. For instance, perched on a mile-high cliff in the Martian equivalent of the Grand Canyon, Valles Marineris, there is something which gives the impression of being the equivalent of a Martian flying saucer. As you can see, this is a distinct oval. In fact, it's a convex oval with the sun coming from this direction, the shadowed side here, a fluted rim hanging several hundred feet over this very steep vertical cliff a mile above the valley floor. If you look at the image on the right, you can actually see that in addition to it being oval, it has a pointed front. And on the front, there are windows. In the back, with very interesting symmetry configuration, there appear to be the engines. In June of 2000, we discovered potentially our most extraordinary artifact, this mile-long, several hundred foot wide structure with translucent exterior, a brilliant sun glint, and evenly spaced ribs that looks for all the world like an artificially constructed glass tunnel, which some have termed, like Arthur Clarke, a glass worm on the surface of a planet where it has, again, no business being. We have over a mile long curvilinear convex structure with these extraordinary ribs that appear to be some kind of structural support and right in the middle there's a brilliant sun glint and a darker shadow indicating in the model that this is a constructed object that maybe it's a transportation tube and this little thing which actually is several hundred feet wide on the scale of the photograph is perhaps a car trapped in the middle of the tube when whatever disaster hit Mars and broke the tube at this point hit the planet. It's sometimes hard to gauge what's going on on Mars from a two-dimensional photograph so what we did was go to one of our Enterprise Mission colleagues, Chris Joseph, 
and ask him to submit this image to a shape from shading algorithm. What that allows us to do is to recreate the construction of the two-dimensional form. And what we clearly see is an undulating glass-like tunnel with a sharp break at the position of the car, continuing on down the valley, as one would expect of a greatly eroded ancient artificial structure on the planet Mars. Because this is such a controversial discovery, what we did was, what you do in any science, go to another opinion. So we got Kinsia and Fred Torres to generate a moving animated diagram of the same structure, using the same shape from shading algorithm. And what you see here is a pan around this little valley, and then the tube. And if you look carefully over here, you can see that there's a definite 3D structure to this object with regular spaced ribbing high above the valley floor. Whatever these are, they are not sand dunes. They appear to be structural components of a tube. And as we continue to pan down this valley, which is created by some unknown geological process long after this tube was ever built, you can see that these ribs are on the edges of the valley, not along the floor, something again that sand dunes just don't do. So what we seem to be seeing is the most extraordinary Mars surveyor find namely a huge work of megalithic engineering lying on an ancient Martian plain. The great mystery at this point seems to be if the Enterprise mission and its colleagues can find all this and so much more, then why can't NASA? Or is there something more? Is it possible that they have seen what we have seen and also understand what's really there?